Hey everybody, welcome back to a new review video where we're going to be looking at a new small power station. This is the Bouge RV Flash 300 and it's called the Flash 300 because it actually charges so quickly. This has built-in AC charging, it can charge at 600 watts, but it also has a very cool feature with solar charging. This can also charge at 600 watts of solar charging input, which is unheard of for such a small power station. So that's why I thought this would be a very unique review video, because if you have quite a few solar panels and you just wanna dump that power into a very small power station to charge it up in 30 minutes, this power station can do that. Now, before jumping into the actual details and specifications on this power station and how it did in all my testing, I thought it'd be helpful to show you guys how this stacks up against some other 300 watt hour power stations that I've tested on the channel. So looking at all three, I have the Blue Eddy EB3A, I have the Bouge RV Flash 300, and the Energizer 320. Now the Energizer comes in at nine pounds, has 320 watt hours of capacity. The Bouge RV comes in at 14.2 pounds, it's rated at 286 watt hours of capacity. And the Blue Eddy EB3A is 10 pounds and it has 268 watt hours of capacity. Now when comparing the size of all three of these power stations, you can see that the Bouge RV Flash 300 is slightly larger than the other two, and that's probably because this has some larger components inside. For example, this has a 600 watt MPPT solar charge controller and a 600 watt pure sine wave inverter. Now the Bouge RV Flash 300 does have lithium ion or NMC batteries inside, so it's rated at 700 charge cycles to 80% of the original capacity. Now this is priced at $399, and I have a 14% off discount code that applies to a lot of Bouge RV products. So even with the heaviest discount, it's a little bit more expensive than what we try to aim for at 80 cents a watt hour or around a dollar per watt hour or less. So let's go ahead and jump into all the testing that I did on the power station and see how this performed. And then we'll talk about some pros and cons at the end of the video and see if this one is the right one for you. Now, when it comes to powering your 12 volt appliances, this has multiple output options. You have a 12 volt cigarette plug with a dust cover and you have two 5521 barrel connections. Now testing to see if this output is regulated, it is regulated at 13.2 volts throughout the entire state of charge, which is great. And to test the maximum power, I was able to get 147 watts out of the 5521 connections. Now I wouldn't recommend doing that over a long period of time because those will get hot over that extended period of time, but it's okay to do short bursts with the 5521s. And with the 12 volt cigarette plug, I was able to get 148 watts. Now testing both those combined, I was able to get 152 watts. So a little bit more power with both of them being used at the same time. Now, sometimes I like to torture test the DC output on a power station. So I plugged in my Viair 12 volt air compressor, which pulls a ton of surge current. And this is what it sounded like on the Bouge RV Flash 300. So surprisingly, this did a great job powering that up. Now I also wanted to test on the Blue Eddy EB3A and this is what it looked like on the EB3A. Now unfortunately I bricked the DC output on the EB3A while trying to do that test. So this one definitely came out on top in that test. Now I'm gonna have to reach out to Blue Eddy support because that EB3A DC output will no longer turn on. Now there are a few other tests that I like to do on the DC output just to make sure there's nothing wrong with the power station. And one of those is a full discharge test to see if we can hit advertised capacity. Now this is advertised to have 286 watt hours of capacity. So I plugged in my battery load tester and started to discharge the battery and it tracked all the power coming out of it. And by the time this turned off, I was able to pull 248 watt hours of capacity we're right around 86% of the advertised capacity. So we were able to hit our goal of 85%. Now some power stations have an issue with the auto shutoff setting of the DC output, meaning that to save power, they'll just turn it off randomly. Now I tried to do two different tests. I tried to test to see how much power the DC output uses over time or the idle power draw of that. And every time I came back, it was just shut off. Now it's anywhere around 30 minutes to an hour that it shuts off. I wanted to test to see if that would have any issues running a 12 volt compressor fridge. So I did plug in my IceCo Go 20 and this was sitting at 100%. I was able to run the fridge for 12 hours 
When I came back, it was at 3%. So it didn't have any issue running a 12 volt compressor fridge, but it did have a weird auto shut off setting. So it's kind of in between. So just be aware with a really small load, this may shut off the DC output on you. Now, as for charging mobile devices, this power station does have a wireless charger on the top and it does work just fine. I was able to charge up my Samsung uh, via wireless fast charging, so that's good. On the front, you have multiple USB ports. You have a USB-C bi-directional 100 watt port, which is great. And then you have three USB-A ports, one being a fast charge port. Now I did try to test the bi-directional charging and it kind of works differently with different devices. For example, I was able to charge one device um, at 60 watts going out, but when I tried to charge my Energizer 320, it decided to put the power from the Energizer into this. It's kind of hard if you have two devices that are both bi-directional, sometimes you can't control which way the power flows and it just does what it wants. So yes, this does have a bi-directional charging port. I did take my Caval charger and I was able to charge this up at 100 watts, but just be aware, if you have two bi-directional charging devices, the power can kind of go back and forth and it doesn't really make up its mind. Now the other USB ports work just fine. I didn't have any issues testing those. Uh, this would work really well to charge up a lot of different mobile devices, run USB devices at the same time. Now I wanna take a second to talk about the AC inverter on this power station. Remember, this is one of the cool features is that this has a 600 watt pure sine wave inverter and it only has 300 watt hours of capacity. So it's a small power station with a lot of output. Now, of course, I wanna see how the inverter performs under a max load. And I usually do this through a 15 minute max load test. So I plugged in a 600 watt load on the AC inverter and set a timer and let it run. Now I plugged in my oscilloscope and I was able to get a pure sine wave output. You can see there's a little bit of distortion on the top and bottom, meaning that it's not a perfect output, but it's pretty decent. As per the voltage, this puts out 110 volts and I was able to get close to that with my voltmeter. Now about three quarters of the way through the test, the fans were kicking up. So I pulled out my decibel meter and it was putting out around 58 decibels of noise at a meter away from the power station. So just be aware, this does have a variable fan and for the most part, it's very quiet, but under a max load, it will turn up that fan to a louder level to keep the power station cool. Now, after the 15 minutes had finished, uh, there were no issues running that 600 watt load. So very good results on the max load test. Now, I also like to test to see if there's any noise or interference that comes off with the AC inverter. And a way to do that is by plugging in a guitar amp. So I plugged in my guitar amp and this is what it sounded like off the AC inverter. Now it's important to test it while it's charging whenever you have a internal charging system. So I also tested the guitar amp while it was charging and this is what it sounded like. So you can see I did get some noise and interference whenever it was charging, but when it wasn't charging, it sounded just fine. So just be aware of that. Now it's also important to test the capacity you get as you discharge the power station through the AC inverter. So I charged this up to 100%, connected up my watt meter that tracked all the power going out of the power station, and I put a 0.2C rate load on it. And after it was discharged and shut off, I was able to pull a total of 240 watt hours. And when we compare that to the advertised capacity of 286, we did get 83%, which was a little bit less than the DC output. Now that's pretty normal that the AC inverter uses a little bit more background power draw, so you'll get less output. Now when I went to test the AC idle output, um, I could not test that because it actually shuts off after about 10 minutes of just being on. So the only way to keep the AC inverter on is to interact with the power station every couple minutes. There's no way for me to know how much power it uses because it has an auto shutoff setting after about 10 minutes or so. Now, unfortunately, there's not a way to change these settings. There's no smart app connectivity. There's no firmware update on this. So we are kind of stuck with whatever settings are programmed into the device. Now, if there was a smart app and you could do a firmware update on this, Bujar V could put out a new firmware to change some of those settings. But unfortunately, that isn't the case with this power station. Now, one of the most exciting parts about the Bujar V Flash 300 is 
how you can charge it up. There are four different ways to charge up this power station with three different input ports. So let's go ahead and break those down. On the front, you have a Anderson power pole input. It supports 12 to 45 volts up to 25 amps. And that's where you get the 600 watts of solar input. You also have a USB-C power delivery port that's bi-directional, supports up to 100 watts. And then you have your AC wall charging port on the side. That's right, there are no external charging bricks. All you have is just an included AC charging cable, which is pretty awesome. Now, Bouge RV includes three of these charging cables in the box. You get the AC wall charging cable, you get a solar charging cable with MC4 connections, and you get a DC charging cable with a 12 volt cigarette plug. Now, when you're charging off the 12 volt cigarette plug, you're gonna see around 100 watts charging input. When you're charging with the AC wall adapter, you're gonna see around 600 watts charging input, and you can charge this in an impressive 30 minutes all the way up to 90%, so very high input there. Now, when charging off of solar panels, there are multiple options for plugging panels in. You can plug in one 12 volt panel or you can plug in uh, two sets of 12 volt panels in series. So in order to test the solar charging input, I have a couple of these 180 watt Bouge RV panels that are the newer 9BB panel. And I had two of them connected in parallel first and I plugged that in. You can see I got over 200 watts of charging input, which is very impressive on this small power station. Now I also took uh, four of those panels, I put two in parallel, put another two in parallel, and then put those together in series for a 2S, 2P panel configuration. And I was able to charge this up at almost 450 watts. So tons of solar input on such a small power station. Now, even though this power station does not support UPS functionality, meaning it does not act like an uninterrupted power supply, it does support pass-through charging, meaning that you can have the AC inverter on and the DC output on and charge it all at the same time. Now, this will help you extend your run times whenever you're running something off the AC inverter or DC output. For example, you could have 200 watts of solar plugged in and you could have a 300 watt load on the power station and it would last much longer. So let's talk about a few other features before we finish up the video. Now on the top of the power station, you have three integrated handles. I like how they're built in. They don't take up any extra space. Uh, for example, when you have a huge handle on the top, you can't really stack things on the power station. So I like the design on this. Now, as for the actual display, you have your watts input, your watts output, gives you a battery percentage and a battery icon just to give you an estimate of how empty it is. It also gives you the estimated time till uh, it's full charging or until it's completely empty, which is really nice. Now on the back of the power station, there is an integrated LED light. Now what's really cool about this is it has both a diffused ring and it has a few spot LEDs. So you can either diffuse the light out through the room or you can use it like a flashlight and shoot the light straight out in front of you. So really cool that it has that integrated LED light. I haven't seen a power station with that dual LED light design. Now in the owner's manual for the product, it states that it has a one year warranty if you purchase on their Bouge RV Amazon store or the Bouge RV official website. Now on their website, it states it has an 18th month warranty. Now I did reach out to Bouge RV and they confirmed that there was an 18th month warranty on the product. So a little bit of confusion there. And you can reach out to the following contact methods if you want to get a hold of them for any issues that you have with the product. Okay guys, we're here at the end of the video where I give a conclusion about the Bouge RV Flash 300. Now this consists of two different parts. The first part is how well did this do on my power station grading system? There are 10 points available and we'll break down the score that it got. In the second part, we're gonna talk about the pros and cons of this power station so you guys have a better idea if this will meet your specific use case. So let's go ahead and start with the power station grading system. Now there are 10 points available. The first one being, can this charge up to 100% in four hours? Yes, it can, so I'm gonna give it a point there. The second one, does this support pass-through charging, meaning that you can charge it and discharge it at the same time? Yes, it does, so I'll give it a point there. Number three, does this have a pure sine wave inverter? Yes, it has a pure sine wave inverter, but it only puts out 110 volts, and under the max load, we did see a little bit of distortion on the inverter, so I'm only gonna give it a half point on this one. Number four, does this have a regulated DC output? Yes, the DC output is regulated at 13.2 volts throughout the entire state of charge, so I will give it a point there. Number five, does this power station have an informational display? Yes, it'll show your watts input, your watts output, estimated time remaining, and an actual battery percentage, so I will give it a point there. Number six, does this power station have any auto shutoff settings? 
Now I'm gonna give it a half point here because it kind of had some auto shut off settings if it didn't have a load on it, but it did run a 12 volt compressor fridge just fine. So now I like it when power stations don't have these weird uh, auto shut off settings. So it would be nice if Bouge RV fixed that. Number seven, does this power station have a bi-directional 100 watt USB-C power delivery port? Yes, that's a mouthful, but yes, this does support um, charging via the 100 watt port. You can charge it at 100 watts and you can charge devices at 100 watts as well. So it's an input and output port, which is pretty cool. I definitely want that on all small devices like this. Number eight, does this power station meet 85% of its rated capacity? Now it is advertised to have 286 watt hours of capacity and we were able to get 86% of that on the DC output. So yes, it does. I'm gonna give it a point there. Now, number nine, can this power station charge within five hours using solar panels? Yes, I'm gonna give it a point there. This will charge up to 600 watts extremely fast with solar panels. Now, number 10, the last point, it talks about the actual value of the power station, meaning what is the cost per watt hour or how good of a price is this power station? Well, I always aim for uh, 80 cents a watt hour or a dollar per watt hour or less. So this one comes in at its steepest discount at a dollar and six cents per watt hour. So unfortunately we do not hit that goal. So I can't give it a point there. At its MSRP price, this comes in at $399 or $1 and 40 cents a watt hour. So this power station is a fairly expensive power station. There are other more affordable options out there. Now looking at all the points tallying them up, this got eight points out of 10 points available on the power station grading system. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to the pros and cons of this power station, starting with the cons. Let's get the bad stuff out of the way first. Now, the first con on this power station is the actual price. It comes in above a dollar per watt hour, and there are lesser uh, expensive power stations or more affordable options out there, so just be aware. In my opinion, the high price is one of the cons. Now, the next con, in my opinion, is the actual battery chemistry inside. This has lithium ion batteries or NMC batteries, and I've had some bad experiences from those and they also just get less charge cycles. So in my opinion, it's just another con. Now the final con is the fact that this has some auto shutoff settings. I don't like that the DC output and the AC inverter shut off um, if there is no load on the power station. I wish Bouge RV would have just put some sort of eco mode that you could turn on and off. So um, just my opinion, those are the three cons about the power station. Now moving on to the pros. There are some decent things about this power station that I like. For example, I like that it has a 600 watt pure sine wave inverter, so you can power larger things with such a small power station. So that's a really good thing there. The second one is the fact that this can charge so quickly. I love that it has internal AC charging. There's no external charging brick. And I love the fact that this will charge so fast using solar input up to 600 watts. So that's another pro in my opinion. And the last pro is the fact that this has the ability to charge lots of different mobile devices at the same time. You have your wireless charger on top, you have your USB-C power delivery port that is bi-directional and all the other USB ports. So this would work really well for wanting to charge up laptops, cell phones, flashlight batteries, drone batteries, all on the go. Um, so I do think that this is very capable in charging mobile devices. Okay, well, there you have it, the Bouge RV Flash 300. what did you guys think about the actual performance of the power station? I'd love to get your guys' feedback. Throw a comment down below. Is this something you guys would go with or would you choose something else? And like always, if you like the content, please give me a thumbs up. It always helps out the videos. And I hope to see you guys in a future video. Now, I will tell you, this is probably the last power station that I will review on the channel that has lithium ion or NMC batteries in it. I'm just kind of going in a different direction with power stations with different battery chemistries in the future. So let me know what you guys think about that as well. Thanks guys for watching. We'll see you later.